for the James and the Giant Peach. Chapter 2 After James and Harry's daughter had been living with the sands for three whole years, there, there came a morning when something rather peculiar happened to him. And these things, which, as I say, was only really peculiar, soon caused the second thing to happen, which was very peculiar. And then the very peculiar thing, in its own terms, caused a really fantastically peculiar thing to occur. All started on a blazing hot day in the middle of summer, and Sponge and Michael Sp and James were all out in the garden. James had been put the walls as usual. This time he was shopping little for the kitchen stove, and Sponge and Spike were sitting up comfortably in stacked chairs nearby, sipping those glasses of fizzy lemonade and watching him to see that he didn't stop walk for one moment. And Sponge was enormously fat and very short. She had small, squeaky eyes, a sunk mouth, and one of those white, flabby faces that looks exactly as though it had been royal. She said, like, uh, she was like a squeezed white, soggy, over royal cabbage. And Spiker, uh, on the other hand, was lean and tall and bony, and she wore. This remains spectacles that fixed onto the sands of her nose with a cliff. She had a kitchen to her sands, long with narrow lips, and one of her shikas and angry was sighted, little face of face, who seemed to shouting out of her mouth as she talked. And there uh, they were said, They decided these two scarcely sex, sleeping their things. And Sparrows every now and then again screaming at James to travel faster and faster. They also talked about some sausage one saying how beautiful she was. And Sponge just alone sent this meal on her lap, and she kept picking it up and gazing at her own serious face. I look at Sponge, and Sponge declared, as lovely as a nose. Just face your eyes up my eye, face. Observe my shaved nose. Behold my hand with silky socks. And if I take one out of both my socks, you'll see my day first. But don't forget, and Spike said, how much your time is yours. And Sponge Marias and Spike said, my sweet, you can win. Behold my gorgeous service life, my teeth, my charming green. Oh, bitch, it's me, how I do my spirit. Reduce books, looks, and please ignore the bomb. Pillow machine. Pillow machine. My dear old trouts, and Sponge cried, you are all about the skin. Such liveness as I suppose is turned only really shining holy ears, and Sponge declared, oh, wouldn't that be fine? I catch all the nurse's thoughts. They give me all the leading parts. The sauce will be all three in. Let's get Sign, recite things you make, and Spike said, a lovely thinking sign. <laughs> Poor James was still sleeping, sleeping away at the shopping, shopping out block. The heat was terrible. He was sweating all over. He's almost aching. The chapel was large, but... Learn things for too heavy for the small boys to use. And as it was, James began thinking about all the other children in the world that they about all the other children in the world and uh, what they might be doing in this moment. Some would be riding deskers in their gardens. Some would be walking in cool woods and picking branches of wild flowers. And all the little friends who he used to know would be down by the side playing in the west and then splashing around in the water. Great tears began so things out of James. James is eyes and is rolling down his cheeks. He starts walking and lean against the trapping block, overwhelmed by his own unhappiness. What's the matter with you? And Spiker screeched, glaring at him over the top of her steel spectacles. James began to cry, Stop it immediately and get on your, your works, you nasty little beast! And Sponge ordered, Oh, and this sponge, James cried, and Auntie Spike, couldn't we all please just for once go down to the seaside on the first 
It isn't very far, and I feel so hot and awful and lonely. Why, you lazy goof, for rotting roots! And Spiker shouted. Beat him! Cried Aunt Sponge. I suddenly wolf! And Spiker snapped. She glared at James, and James looked back at her with, ah,、uh, looked back at her with large red eyes. I shall beat you later on in the day when I don't fall so hard, she said. And now get out of my sight, you disgusting little one, and give me some peace. James turned and ran. She ran as fast as he, as he could through the forest and the forest gardens, and he hid himself behind the clump of dirty old laurel bushes, laurel bushes that he mentioned, laurel <laughs> bushes that we mentioned earlier on. Then he covered his face with his hands and began to cry and cry.